Hey everybody, welcome to Super Comic Fun Times Daily Vlog. I'm Douglas, and today I have for you two books I read today. Um, the first one up is Bosch Fostwin's um, Table for One, which I got a few days ago. This book was originally published in 2004 and was nominated for an Eisner Award. This book is incredible. Uh, if you watched my unpacking video for it, I just I love uh, the unique lettering, at least as far as I know, it's unique that uh, Bosch has come up with for, for this book. Um, if you also remember, it's like I noticed like fall 2001 and I thought it might uh, revolve around 9-11, but it really doesn't, it's mentioned, but that's about it. The story itself is about a, a writer. I'm assuming it's autobiographical again, the lead character's name is Will, and he's modeled after Bosch Fostwin. There you see there. Now, when I first saw this cover, I actually, and I'm sure this was done on purpose, I thought he was holding a, a sort of futuristic gun of some sort, but he's actually holding a pen. Will is uh, wanting to be a writer, but he works as a, this, this cover is actually very good. It actually tells you everything that you're going to encounter in this book. And in a very symbolic way, uh, Bosch Fostrin seems to be a master of symbolism. Me, myself, not being a master of symbolism, I can only guess, <laughs> but you know, like you look here, this is, uh, this is Will's boss standing in the doorway, the exit. Uh, this is how his idealized self, how he wants to be, the writer. This is, I think this is supposed to be him. Um, I don't, can't imagine which other character it could be. Uh, as the waiter, uh, there's his girlfriend. And of course the book, the story is very symbolic. Like um, it has a lot of Randian ideals. I would say, I, I didn't look uh, this name up, but Joe Zabel, uh, it's a name that's familiar to me. I, I can't quite place it now, but I think this single quote uh, sums up this book. Uh, a single night in a single setting that conveys an entire way of life, an entire philosophy, the past, present, and future of several characters, the dialogue, succinct, idealistic, and tough. And uh, that's exactly what it is. This is, uh, this is not a children's book. It deals with... Um, uh, ideas uh, that were originated with Ayn Rand's uh, objectivist philosophy. Uh, the, the main character is more or less like the uh, Howard Rourke type from The Fountainhead, uh, uncompromising artist. And uh, he, needs, he needs money, so he's working for his uncle at a restaurant. And there's just so much here. I, you know, I've only read it once. Uh, for instance, his girl's uh, his his name is Will, which is referring to the will, the will to succeed, the will to thrive. You know, to to impose your will on the world. Uh, his uh, girlfriend's name is Ven, which refers to a uh, Venn diagram. Which you know, it's it's a kind of a it's usually a circle, and it shows all the logical intersections of a limited group of sets. Um, and uh, the the uncle the. The restaurant owner, his name is Rich, so he's he's rich. So you've got that sort of thing going in. And the thing about the thing, you know, I started reading this book uh, yesterday morning on the bus, and I thought it was only like two or three pages in, but I was about a quarter of the way through, and that surprised me because the book just reads so easy that I didn't, you know, I did not uh, think I, I got very far at all, uh, but I did, and then I, I finished it this afternoon. Uh, it's, I, I don't know, I can't recommend this book enough. It's, it's not science fiction. I was starting to think of uh, what genre it might fit in. Of course, it uh, expresses a philosophy. Uh, it's also kind of a slice of life. It takes place uh, in a single night in the life of its main character, uh, Will, who uh, needs money to publish his book. Uh, uh, and so, you know, you've got the character, he's got his motivation. The story's got a beginning, a middle, and end. Um, the artwork is just, it's its unique, it's striking. The black and white is very good. I've often uh, thought after uh, reading it, I read Me for Vendetta a few years ago, and then I watched Ellen Moore's um, videos talking about how he thought the best version was the black and white version. And 
I have to admit the coloring in the version I got bothered me and I'd always wanted to read it in the original black and white. But that book didn't do much for me. I liked the first half of it and then it just seemed to kind of go on too long. And I'm just showing some random pages. Just, you know, the the artwork is just, I don't know, it's beautiful. I, I like it. It's, you know, I, I noticed this in uh, The Infidel uh, featuring Pigman is, I think this is uh, Bosch Boston's own convention where when a, a character would have his back to and talking to another character, he makes a little window so you can see who he's talking to. And I'm not sure how I feel about this, but I I, I find it interesting that it's it's there. You know, I mean, in some ways, it it takes you out of the scene a little bit. I don't know. I like it, and but I'm I'm not sure that's the best way to to convey that there's somebody on the other side. On the other, you know, on the other hand, it's kind of cool. It's like this thing I've never seen any place else. And, uh, you know, in a video game, they would just kind of make the character a little bit transparent and you could see them. And I don't think that would work at all in, in this medium. So I like it. And uh, I mean, I, I don't know what to say about it. And probably it's just because I've never seen anything like it before. So no complaints there. I'm just, uh, I, I'm guess, I guess I'm just still pondering it. Is, is, is that the best way to do that? And it might be, I, I don't know, I'm not an artist. But yeah, so, you know, he's got his friends. And to me, I don't know if this is intentional. It, it probably is. That's his girlfriend. I think she looks like Ayn Rand a little bit, not very much. Here, maybe this one a little bit more, you know, like a very young Ayn Rand. So... I think this might be what, uh, you, you know, it is very uh, poetic too. It's like, uh, you know, lines like uh, that are on the, the back cover here. It's like, I walk into a crowded room, not a soul in sight. Uh, and there's, there's more examples of that. I, I didn't write them down, unfortunately. There's a little bit of action in here, but mostly it's kind of a slice of life, what takes place in this guy's um, life in a single night, but it also conveys so much more. It's, it's hard to describe. It's a, it's a work of philosophy on 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 a level, and I and I, that's all intentional from from what I can tell from what I know about Bosch Fostwin. So um, moving on from there, let's go to the um, the superhero side of the graphic novel or comic book. And today I also read Mister Miracle Four from uh, nineteen eighty nine. Of course, a Jack Kirby creation. Um, this cover is a little deceitful, but it's a good cover. I like it. I like the horses and stuff, and it shows Mr. Miracle um, work, working the locks, working the lock pick. Uh, that doesn't actually happen in here. Now, the inner art, um, it's not terrible. It's, it's a little weird. I haven't seen art like this for... Uh, a New Gods product uh, so far, and it didn't really stop my enjoyment of the book. Um, I, I think the printing process, I don't know if this book, like here when I'm looking at it on camera, it looks much better than it did when I was reading it. It looks a little washed out when I'm reading it, and I don't know how it would look in a, uh, it, it, you know, this has been collected in the volume and reprinted. Uh, so what this story is basically about is like in, in this series, I start with four, the next one I have is eight. So the next one after that is 10. And in the next issue, like this one is uh, J.M. DeMatteis uh, is the writer and Ian Gibbon is the artist. And um, the two issues, the, you know, the next one I have to read, Len Wayne is uh, the scripter. I think uh, DeMatteis is the plotter and Len Wayne is the scripter. I forget who the artist is on that one, but it's it's not Ian Gibbon. So anyways, it's uh, Thanksgiving and High Father is, uh, you know, this confusing. I don't know all that much about the new gods. You know, I've got the big book. Oh, incidentally, it's like, I know there was a recall on the uh, Jack Kirby Fourth World. I got mine from Amazon. I have to figure out how to return it for a corrected version. If anybody can help me out with that, I, I appreciate it. So yeah, it was kind of weird because like High Fathers, I guess he's supposed to be a pilgrim, but um, the art is so stylized that I'm never quite sure what I'm looking at in this book. Um, and so the forever people pop in and then the neighbors are, who are also over for dinner, they're all 
like freaked out and um and so beautiful dreamer does like a uh, little bit of men in black type memory man manipulation with him and high father hits him over the head with a stick just like uh a Zen master is said to do to a pupil. I don't know if it's upon graduation or upon being accepted as a pupil. I, I've never studied Zen, but I, I just found that an interesting uh, correlation. Uh, and so, yeah, they have uh, Thanksgiving and these kids you see at the beginning, they're being chased by shadows. And I think the thing I didn't like, I mean, overall, there's like a lot happening here. So like, you know, the uh, forever people or the tomorrow people, I'm sorry, I don't know who the forever people are. But the tomorrow people pop in for Thanksgiving dinner and beautiful dreamer is pregnant. And uh, then she ends up giving birth and the baby can talk even, even while in the womb. And, um, and so, yeah, that's what beautiful dreamer does. She makes the tomorrow people look regular. And, um, and like so many of us might get on uh, Thanksgiving is Scott free is kind of moody. And so, you know, he, he gets into it with his dad and it's like, you know, high father's his father and the high father uh, traded him for Oberon. So, you know, to try to have peace between New Genesis and Apocalypse when he was a kid. And Scott is just, you know, he's never really known his father. And here he is kind of barging in, uh, taking over for Thanksgiving. So he goes for a walk and these kids at the beginning, they're like bewitched by these shadow people and they conk him over the head and uh, take them to the to the lair. And uh, then you have Oberon. Oberon by far is the best character in this book. He's, you know, he's looking out for, you know, very protective of Scott. He Here he's like standing up to High Father and he's like ta telling High Father, you know, you, you know, you screwed up. You know, you might be God there, but here you're just another father that screwed up. So I, you know, I really enjoyed this book then. Um, uh, the the tomorrow people are still kind of stuck in the early seventies. Uh, you have uh, what was his name Sephiroth, uh, the guy with the guitar, and he's like talking. You know, it's groovy and this sort of thing. And then um, the one neighbor said, you know, back in the day, my name was Passion Flower, and I'm not sure if those two were married or or what, but she seems to be hitting a little bit on on Sephiroth, and um, and so yeah, so it just kind of ends up with. Uh, Scott gets captured. Uh, they send the kids over to the house to say, you know, hi, father, you have to go. I like this art. This art is really kind of good. She's one of the bad guys. And apparently she works with these uh, shadow people. What are they called? The dark brigade. So, you know, she works with the darkness and she's fallen out of favor because um, the tomorrow people keep thwarting her kind of like that uh, guy with the dog in the wacky racers. Snidely Whiplash, was that his name? Um, so yeah, she's kind of a very pretty uh, version of that. And so Mr. Miracle gets into his costume and then he takes off with the kids trying to save them, but they've got the the darkness, the shadow people in them and they, the, they flood his lungs, knock him out. And then they, she, you know, the book ends on a cliffhanger. Look at this, Luther, they have a, uh, a killer bio. They have a bi biography of Lex Luthor from 1989. So I've never heard of this. I'm going to probably look it up and do some research on it. It sounds interesting. I like uh, Lex Luthor, especially in 52 when he's trying to get, you know, the series 52 after Infinite uh, Crisis, where he's trying to get superpowers. And that was, I, I like that whole arc with him. I, I don't know too much others. I know like in the seventies, the, when Spider-Man meets Superman, I've got that book and that's my only other relationship other than what I can recall from Dynamite magazine back in the seventies. So yeah, that's about it. So she captures everybody and, uh, and then, you know, we're set up for the, the next issue. And, uh, yeah, this is from 1989. So you have some Nintendo ads here. You have a uh, Campbell soup ad. So I like looking at some of these old ads. A lot of times though, the stories are good. And so I kind of like skip past them. It's like th these kind of companies, I, I don't know if they're around anymore. It's like the, uh, these same ads were showing up in the, in the seventies. So like in still, it's like 11 years later from reading, what was it? Mr. Miracle from 1978. And uh, you still have these ads here as late as 1989. I don't know if these companies are still in business or this company. But uh, I don't know. I kind of like it. Nostalgia.
I never got a pair of x-ray glasses. I was always interested in that stuff, but I didn't believe that x-ray glasses worked because if they worked, you you wouldn't need to go to the doctor. <laughs> so, so even though I like to be fooled by stuff, uh, x-ray glasses were a bridge too far for me, even as a kid. I've always been curious to find them in like a novelty shop and put them on. But other than that, uh, uh, I have no idea how the illusion works. Uh, someday, maybe I'll find out. At any rate, I'm going to draw this uh, episode of the daily vlog to a close. I hope you enjoyed it. I have a link down below for Bosch Fossman's store. And then uh, below that, I have uh, my Amazon links uh, for my affiliate plan. So if you feel like supporting the channel, please do that. Uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe, and I will try to keep this going. I have to get this video that I started two weeks ago up maybe i'll get that up on saturday i this is what happens i think i mentioned it yesterday is like i want to try something new i wanted to put an explosion in this video and then i i never finished the video so maybe i won't put an explosion in there and i'll just put the video up like uh like i've got it so uh talk to you soon bye